Do you want a to-do list that's actually fun to use? Well, stay tuned and we'll chat about it. And welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick Russell, and today we're going to be talking about Todoist. Now, if you've been following me for any amount of time on any of my social media platforms, you know I absolutely love Todoist. And in this video, we're going to dive into what Todoist is and how it can make your to do list a lot more fun to check off all of those tasks. So with that said, let's dive in and talk about what Todoist actually is. So what is Todoist? Now Todoist is one of the best, if not the best task management tool on the market today. No question. And that's not even just the paid version, that's the free version as well, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, Todoist lets you capture and organize all of your tasks in real time using natural language. So you can input reoccurring tasks using natural language so you're not fumbling around trying to set dates and not have it reoccur or happen how you want, when you want, in the duration that you want. That's the bonus to using Todoist. Now, for me, I've been using Todoist for a number of years. I believe I started back in about 2017 when I initially downloaded the app. And I'll be honest, when I downloaded the app, I was very spotty in how I used it. I would get into a routine of using it and then stop and completely forget about it. But it wasn't until 2018 that I finally started using it. And the cool thing about Todoist back then was it actually gave you a yearly report on how well you were doing for the year and it tracked year after year how much, how many tasks you've completed, how you did compared to the previous year. But unfortunately, that was a lot of work for the team and I completely understand, so they stopped doing that. But regardless, each and every single year I get better, I get more efficient and I start using Todoist a lot differently than I have in the past. Now, what's the cool thing and why does it make it more fun? Well, with Todoist, they have what they call karma points. This is a point system for if you complete a task, create a task, or a number of different features, you get points and those points add up. Now on the flip side, if you have a task that's gone overdue and it sits there for a while and, and it doesn't get completed, you'll start to lose some points. And with these points, you get to different levels. So what are these levels? Now, the first one is the beginner level. That's from zero points to 500 points. And that's just getting started. From there, you move up to the novice level and that's 500 to 2,500 points. From there, you move up to intermediate, to professional, to master, to grandmaster, and then where I'm at right now in the enlightened stage. And that's anything from 500,000 points and beyond. Now, unfortunately, they haven't updated the levels uh, since the beginning. So once you get that, to that enlightened level, you're stuck there, but the cool thing is you still accumulate points for everything you do, so you can monitor back and see how you're doing and how far you're progressing. Now, each level obviously is a little harder to obtain, and I believe it was 2020, early 2023 that I finally got to Enlightened. So that took me from about 2017 to 2023 to get to that level. So that's how Todoist actually makes it fun for you to actually complete your tasks. But how do I use Todoist now? And how can you use it? Well, let's talk about that right now. So for me, originally when I first started with the app, I used Todoist for literally everything. I had projects in there, just my task list, my client, quote unquote, portals, 
where I had a shared project with clients and they could add uh, projects, I could add projects. We could see the complete timeline of everything. And I noticed it was getting a little too overwhelming. It was just bogging things down and it just wasn't as organized, organized as I would like it to be. So that's when I found Notion and slowly started to shift the project management side of things, the CRMs and all of that into Notion. And I got back to basics with Todoist. And Todoist now is my task management app. It's where I have my reoccurring tasks. It's where I have my odd daily tasks, my reminders for the TV shows that I like to watch. Yes, I put my TV shows in there. I use it as my grocery list. As well, it, I use that as my main time blocking tool. Now, to time block into it, to, in Todoist is super simple, and that's why I use it. With Todoist, you have a two-way sync with your Google Calendar. So if you go into Todoist, and like I mentioned before, using the natural language, you could easily block out all of your meetings, all of your time blocks, all of your tasks, and have them in your Google Calendar as well. So for example, if I have task A on a Monday, and that task is a two hour long task, all I have to do is type in task A, go into the due date field, on Monday at 8 a.m. for two hours. And then you could add a filter, you can add a label to it, and that's it. As soon as you hit save for that, it automatically creates that to do list on Monday, and then it'll automatically put that into your Google Calendar so that time is blocked out and you're good to go. And we'll get into time blocking a little deeper in another video, but that's how easy it is to use with Todoist. So how do I use Todoist? Let's dive in and take a look at my actual Todoist and we'll find out a little more. Okay, so here we go. We are sitting in my Todoist now and we're gonna go over this. So unfortunately, yesterday was Sunday and I'm recording this video on a Monday. I actually forgot to check off a couple tasks. So you'll notice that they are overdue right now. And then all I have left today is to create the TikTok content, which I just did. So we're gonna check that off. And uh, since I'm filming this video as we're speaking, I'm going to take this, check that off. So the only task I have for today now is to fill my TikToks, and we'll do that right after this video. And you'll notice I have uh, two um, items that I have to schedule out tomorrow. I have my morning routine, which is something that I time block in my calendar from 8 to 8.30, just so I can go over things like all of my uh, digital routines, like I make sure I clear out the temp files from all my devices, get in to do the Google updates and things like that. Happy birthdays on Facebook. So everything is going down the list exactly how I have it plotted out. You'll see later this week, I've got to work on a newsletter. I'll put that in the description below so you can sign up for that. But I have to work on this month's newsletter and you see the next one is, I'm gonna be talking about Notion in the next video. So I have to start scripting that video. So that's kind of what my week looks like. So in my work project, I have all of my clients and each client has their own tasks and um, uh, templates that I use. So everything's in there. In my personal tab, all I have is my routines, my TV shows like I talked about and my shopping list. So in, for example, the TV shows, I love The Rookie, Superman and Lois is coming up pretty soon, the 911 shows, X-Men, which doesn't have a date because it just finished, and Blue Bloods, and actually SWAT was in there, but since SWAT's all finished with, I took that out. Um, and then I have my shopping list. So all the different stores that I shop at are on here. So when I go to Basics or New Frills, I just had a new task and type out milk, eggs, ground beef, whatever the case may be. Um, LCBO, well, I have the market, uh, Costco, all that kind of stuff. So that's literally all I have in my to-do list. Now, the most important part of this is the labels. And this is how everything stays organized in my upcoming view. 
So I keep the filters simple. Priority one, two, three, and four. And the way I use the priorities is very similar to the pair method. Priority one is my P, that's my projects. Priority two is my areas, which is the A in the para, and that's the ongoing stuff that never really have an end date. And then I can have those in there. Priority three is my um, resources, and four is my archives. So I kind of use that system loosely with the filters, but more so the labels is how everything is organized in my Todoist. So I start out with high priority tasks that have to get done ASAP through my routines, then my tasks, which are things like creating content, scheduling content, videos, and then I have those tasks broken down to early morning, morning, midday, evening, and then evening and night. Then my chores, and then my evening routines, TV shows has its own label, and then the Google Calendar, which if I create a time block in Google Calendar, it automatically syncs into my Todoist, automatically with that Google Calendar label, and then I could add other labels to that after. And as it's listed here is how it organizes in my upcoming view or my today view all the way down. So that's it. That is my Todoist and how I use it. And let's jump back in to talk a little further about a couple of really cool things like natural language. All right, so let's dive in and actually use natural language so you can see what that looks like. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a task. We'll just pretend film TikTok or film YouTube video. So film YouTube video, and we're going to do that. We're gonna pick the date. So we're gonna do that, say Tuesday at one o'clock. So all you have to do is Tuesday at 1 p.m for two hours and let's say 45 minutes. So you can note, see at the bottom here, it starts at one o'clock, goes to 3.45. And you can change the time, you can have it two hours and 30 minutes, whatever it works to. Once you click that, it automatically saves in. You can take uh, priority, so we'll have that filter in there. We're gonna pick a label, say a midday task. You can have reminders. You can set if it goes to your inbox or whatever project you want it to go to. Uh, we'll leave that one in the inbox for now because I don't want it to tie in anything else. And all you have to do is hit add task. And oh, I didn't click it, there you go, add task. It's already set. It's in your inbox ready to go, and it also is in your Google Calendar at one o'clock on Tuesday. How cool is that? All right, so let's talk about plans. Now, don't get me wrong, the free version, the beginner, is quite capable to do quite a lot of things, and you could basically use most of the features in the free version if you want, and that will, get you through what you need to do. Now, the the pro plan is a little bit different and you got a few extra things like your reminders and reoccurring tasks, but in the free version, you get five projects right off the hop. You're gonna get the natural language to smart with a smart quick ad and you get three filters. So you'll be a little uh, more careful in how you make those filters, but you get the three filters and you're good to go. Now, with the pro plan, it's 300 projects. You get task reminders and the duration, duration times. You, so that way, from at one o'clock for three hours, that is part of the pro plan. But you can still do it at one o'clock and it'll give you a reminder, or you can just have it set at one o'clock, but it won't time block for you. Now, you get AI Assistant and 150 filters for the pro version. Now, that's only $7 a month or if you pay yearly, it's $60 for the full year, and that's it. And believe me, it is well worth that price. Like I said, this is one of my favorite apps, and I use it all the time. But what we're gonna do is, because I've been using them you to, to do this for so long, they're good friends of mine, they've let me give you 
two months of Todoist Pro absolutely free. And then after that, you can choose to pay monthly or pay for the year up front. But you get two months of Todoist Pro for absolutely free. And I'll put the description in, or the link in the description below, so you can check that out and see if it's something that you wanna do. I highly re recommend it. Even if you just use it for two months and then cancel it, you have the choice to do that. But believe me, once you use it for two months, you'll see how amazing it is. And the 60 bucks up front for the full year is worth the price point. So that's it, that's Todoist in a nutshell. You'll see why I love it when you start using it. And you saw a little hint. We'll see you on the Notion video next, and we'll chat about that.